Hi, I'm Megan Evans with the Alberta Invasive Species Council. A big thank you to Tennis and the team at the MD of Bonneville for the opportunity uh, to chat with you today. I am really sorry that I'm not there with you in person. I'm actually in New Brunswick visiting my family, which is also very important, um, but, uh, but I'm grateful to have the opportunity to talk a little bit about our weekly forage program uh, with you today. So what I'll do, um, I'll get my screen going here. I'm gonna talk to you about, um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of background uh, for, about the Alberta Invasive Species Council. Uh, then we're going to talk about the history of the Certified Weed Free Forage Program. So this is not a new program. Uh, and then I'll talk about the current status of the, the Certified Weed Free Forage Program and provide contact information and uh, areas for you to uh, go to to find more information. So the Invasive Species Council, hopefully everyone here has heard of us. Um, if you haven't, here's a little bit of background. So we're a nonprofit organization originally established in 2006 as the Invasive Plants Council. So we underwent a name change in 2013 to reflect a broader scope and to incorporate all the different types of invasive species. We have a large board of directors uh, and our bylaws mandate that they all come from a variety of backgrounds and sectors, which, which actually makes us a really strong organization and a really strong board. We have two and a half staff, myself included. So we have two full-time staff and a seasonal that comes on to help us in that with some operational work in the summer. And our funding comes from a variety of sources. So it's really important to know that we're not a government agency and a lot of folks think that we are. So, so we're a nonprofit, uh, we've no guaranteed funding. So we, you know, we do AGLC like casino fundraisers, we apply for grants and we get strong support from municipalities across the province um, and from the provincial government. Uh, so we're really grateful from, uh, for, for all of those sources for their contributions. And we certainly couldn't do the work that we do without it. So what do we do? Um, well, uh, we do all kinds of things. And if you want to learn more about what we do, uh, head to our website, which is abinvasives.ca. Uh, when you're there, you will find information about all of these different things. So you'll find over 150 different invasive species fact sheets. And those fact sheets cover, you know, how invasive species were introduced or could potentially be introduced, how they reproduce their life cycles, how to identify them, how to control them. And there's photos, all kinds of tips for identifying. You know, there's also invasive species photo galleries for most of the invasive species that we have on our website and that can be a really good resource especially for you know new folks just just starting out and learning uh, we have seven different education and outreach campaigns including our latest squeal on pigs campaign uh, which is aimed at addressing the issue of wild boar at large uh, we offer free online webinars like the squeal on pigs forum that we just hosted in may we have uh, an annual conference quarterly newsletters you can sign up for those on the website we also host two different invasive species reporting apps. Now they kind of have a goofy name, but bear with us. So they're called EDMAPS, uh, which stands for Early Detection and Distribution Mapping System, which isn't very catchy, but it is descriptive. So we have both a citizen science version uh, of the EDMAPS app, which is for invasive species identification and reporting. And then we have a professional version, which is geared towards invasive species professionals and practitioners uh, to help them map uh, and record the invasive species distributions and infestations within their jurisdictions. All of the data that are submitted into all of the EDMAPS apps um, are verified by an expert verifier and then submitted into provincially available, uh, publicly available provincial distribution maps. And you can access the EDMAPS data right now by going to edmaps.org and you know, running a query for invasive species in Alberta. It's really a really a cool resource and, and it grows, that resource grows in its value every time a report is submitted through the app. So we encourage you to use it, whether you're, you know, a citizen scientist or whether you're a professional, we've got an app for you. Uh, and it's a great way that you can get engaged and help uh, report invasive species in your area. We also administer the biocontrol release program uh, or a biocontrol release program, I should say. So we have biocontrol agents, which are insects uh, for four or five different uh, invasive plant species. So what you can see in this middle, this middle picture here, this is a, a container lid and all these little critters, these are leafy spurge flea beetles. So these are beetles that only eat leafy spurge. So we come in, we move them around uh, to new leafy spurge infestations um, and the beetles do their work eating the leafy spurge uh, and away we go. So we also have biocontrol agents for spotted and diffuse knapweed, Dalmatian toad flax, and Russian knapweed as well. And we're working uh, on um, a, a grant money uh, from the Saskatchewan government uh, that we can are working with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada on a biocontrol agent for common tansy. Uh, 
which is like super widespread weed within Alberta, we could really utilize some biocontrol insects for that one. So we were working behind the scenes there as well. You know, we launched a, a pet store recognition program. Uh, it was a pilot. We launched that, I guess, in early 2022. So that was this year. Well, this was a train the trainer. So, so it's illegal to dump your aquarium plants and pets into the wild in Alberta. Um, and, and, and that's important because these things can be really damaging to our environment, of course. And, uh, and we have over 100 different infestations of goldfish across the province. All of those are entirely avoidable because people actively dumped their goldfish into places like stormwater ponds. So with this pet store recognition program, what we were trying to do was train up the pet store staff and owners so that they could convey that messaging, which is the don't let it loose messaging. It is illegal to release your aquarium plants and pets. Um, we just undertook with, in conjunction with Wheatland County, a major revision to the weed identification guide. Uh, we received funding from the Alberta Real Estate Foundation, super grateful for them. This guide is awesome. The PDF is on our website now. We will be distributing it this month. Uh, so it's at the printers right now. We're very, very excited about this. And of course, we are a, a coordinator essentially for the Alberta Certified Weed Free Forage Program, which is what we're going to talk about today. So why do we need weed free forage? So we all know that invasive species are a major threat to both our economy and our environment. So invasive species are considered to be the second greatest threat to biodiversity after habitat loss. Um, and uh, they are a major threat to our economy as well. They're, they're estimated to cost Albertans about a billion dollars every single year. Um, that was a 2004 study. So that study that estimated invasive species cost a billion dollars is almost 20 years old. And with inflation doing what it's doing, you know, that number would be astronomically higher in today's dollars. We also know that invasive species can be introduced through contaminated forage. Um, and, and anyone who works in the invasive species world knows that prevention is key. So preventing invasive species from establishing is the single most effective way to manage their, their populations or to manage the species, right? Prevention, prevention, prevention. We also know that there is a demand for certified weed-free forage. So um, we know that our colleagues in national parks, provincial parks are often looking for this product. And when they go looking for it, they can't find it. So we know there's a demand for this product. We just maybe need to link and make some connections there to help facilitate this. So this program, this isn't, you know, this isn't an invasive Alberta Invasive Species Council program. It's way more legit than that. So this is a NASMA program. So NASMA is the North American Invasive Species Management Association. So they're kind of like us, but a much bigger deal. And they encompass all of North America. That means that the certification is recognized all throughout North America, which really could open up new markets, right? This is a value added product. So you can see, here's a map of all of the jurisdictions that are participating in this program. You can see there's pretty decent uptake in the states, right? Like about half of the United States are participating in the program. However, Alberta is a little lonely up here in Canada. We are the only Canadian province or the Canadian jurisdiction that has signed on to the program. Um, so we are, uh, you know, giving a presentation with BC uh, next week to talk to them about the program as well. So there is interest among other Canadian provinces in getting engaged as well. So NASM is the group that sets the protocols, the standards, and is the overall like overarching kind of um, uh, overseer uh, of this program. So what does weed free mean? So let's get this out of the way. This is the question we get all the time. So this very clearly outlined in the NASMA standards, what we're talking about when we talk about weed free. And what they mean is that the forage shall be free of prohibited weeds as defined in the NASMA standards. And what that means is that forage, uh, I guess it's an important distinction. So forage that contains noxious weeds may be certified as weed free, provided no propagated parts are present that could enter the bailed forage. So, you can have weeds in your field that's being certified as weed-free forage, provided there are no propagated parts of the plant. So no seeds, no stolons, no part of the plant that could enter the baled forage and reproduce. So propagated parts, that is really the key here. Um, that is really the key when we talk about weed-free because there can be weeds there. They just can't, they can't be parts of the plants that could enter the baled forage and reproduce. So a little bit of history. So um, this program is not new in Alberta at all. This program has been around uh, in Alberta. We originally signed on as a, our, you know, a, uh, it, we signed on to this program with NASMA in the year 2000. So th this program has been active in the province for 22 years. That's a really long time. 
But ultimately, over the course of those 22 years, there's been variable and low uptake. So, you know, until recently, we, uh, we only had a few municipalities participating in the program and a few inspections each year. And when I say a few, I mean three, three municipalities, two to three inspections per year, <laughs> like really low uptake. And so, you know, it's just interest in this program really was fizzling out. So, uh, which we didn't understand. We were like, this is catching on in the States. There's more and more states signing up for this program. Uh, this is uh, a big deal down in the States. Why is this not working here? So we got involved. AISC decided we needed to get involved. So we um, applied for Canadian Agriculture Partnership funding to actively and aggressively revitalize this program. So the revitalization, this is what we're talking about now. This program has been around for 22 years. We're going to revitalize it. So our role is that of a coordinator. That is really important. So we have no administrative you know, authority. We have no, uh, we cannot, I, myself and my staff, we cannot be certified wheat free forage inspectors. Uh, we are a coordinator and, and I've recently coined the term uh, that is that we are uh, also a cheerleader for this program. So, so we are here to promote it and uh, to let people know it exists and to encourage them to participate in it. So how does this program work? Well, um, so the first thing we need to do is train up certified weed-free forage inspectors. Um, now inspectors uh, can only be folks that are uh, weed inspectors. So, um, so, so we can only train up certified weed-free forage inspectors for, for, of, that are people that have authority under the Weed Control Act not articulating that well. So the people that have authority under the Weed Control Act, those are essentially our county or municipal weed inspectors, right? They have authority under the Weed Act. Those are the only people we can train up as certified weed free forage inspectors. So individual municipalities choose whether or not they're going to offer this service. We know that it will take staff time and resources to implement this program to for their staff to go to these inspections. They take time, you know. Um, so it, municipalities uh, offer this program, you know, they choose whether they'll, they'll offer the program. And then ultimately a producer would contact the county to schedule an inspection. So um, we now have a total of 16, going into 2022, we have 16 uh, different municipalities that have signed on to this program, which is absolutely, we're static about this, this is very exciting. So if you live in one of these counties, um, and uh, and if you live in one of these counties, which you do in the MD of Bonneville, that is a participant, perhaps you live in a different county that is not participating in this program, uh, contact the AISE, contact us, and we will try to coordinate a, a, an inspection for you if that's what you're interested in. So we're working Working to grow interest among other municipalities and also to kind of problem solve when we have folks outside of these jurisdictions that want to part participate in it as well. And we will maintain a current list of participating counties on our website um, as well. So how this program works, um, basically a uh, really important piece is that the inspection has to be conducted within 10 days of harvest. So the inspection is done while the forage is still standing and it must be done within 10 days of the forage being cut. Um, so the perimeter uh, access areas and storage areas all must be inspected. And so the, the inspector enters the field and then they kind of, they walk the perimeter and they wiggle their way through. And when they're going through, they note down every different plant species that they come across, which is really important. So I would get people saying all the time, you know, I might be interested in this program, but my field's not perfect. Well, again, uh, there's lots of ways around this. We don't need perfectly weed-free fields in order to certify forage as weed-free. So first of all, if you do have areas of your field where you do have propagative parts of plants present, it can be taped off. It can be excluded from the forage that is certified as weed-free. So that is one option. Um, again, or you can have weed species that are present in your field that is being certified as weed free, provided there are no propagated parts present. So there's ways that we can work with this and you can work with timing wise, right? Like, if you know, you have a thistle infestation, you know, you can get your first cut uh, uh, bailed uh, and certified weed free because you're not going to have any seeds or anything that are going to enter that, uh, that, that cut to that forage, right? So you can focus on timing. There's lots of different ways we can do this. When, and when we talk about the species list that the inspectors are looking for, um, that includes all of the, the noxious and prohibited noxious weeds on Alberta's Weed Control Act, as well as those listed by NASMA. So it is a fairly robust list, and that list is available on our website as well. And there, there's quite, I think there's 90 species in total, and so an, an additional 15 species that are listed by NASMA um, that are prohibited under this program. 
So once the forage is cut, and again, it must be cut in 10 days or a new inspection has to be conducted. Um, so once it's cut, uh, the forage is baled in a uniquely colored twine that you should be able to get from your municipality, uh, typically at cost. And if you're having trouble finding that, please let us know. We can help you uh, with that. And your inspector will issue a certified weed-free forage certificate, which should which needs to stay with the forage. So, you know, it's it's really not rocket science, uh, It's but it's important. You know, there's a few really important factors there, like the propagated parts, roping off part, portions of field with problems, um, and, and having that inspection conducted within 10 days of harvest. Those are some of those key points. So again, this program has been around for 22 years in Alberta, but really it didn't take off. So the first thing that we did was, you know, we sat down and we tried to identify some of these barriers to success. So the first one was that it was difficult for producers and buyers to get information about the program. So we've created a web page on our website that we've committed to updating and maintaining. So if people are looking, if people are Googling Certified Weed Free Forage Alberta, they can pop onto our website. Uh, hopefully our website is the first hit and then they can get details from there. We also recognize that there was a disconnect between producers and buyers. So, um, you know, we, we know there's people looking for a certified weed free forage. We know there's people able to produce it, but it's not happening. So we've committed to maintaining a list of certified weed free forage inventory on our website and spreading the word about that so that people who want to buy this product can pop onto our website and verify or determine if there is any certified weed free forage available. So that's really important to know as well. Finally, you know, we do know that producers aren't always getting a, a higher price for their product. Now, this isn't something we can actively really get engaged in or really get involved with, but we do hope and expect that, you know, once this program really kind of gets going, natural market processes will come into play. And that would suggest that producers are going to get a higher price for a value added product that there is demand for, right? So again, we can't actively change this feature, but we do hope that, you know, naturally this will come into play once this, um, once it, this market really get, it gets put in place. So based on these barriers, you know, the, these are some of the things that we've committed to doing as a coordinator and a cheerleader for this program. So we provided a page on our website dedicated to the program. We're providing that list of current Weed Free Forage producers that have inventory. Uh, we're promoting the certified Weed Free Forage program to both potential producers and to potential buyers. Um, we coordinate the Weed Free Forage inspector training uh, for weed inspectors uh, across the province. Um, we also do some record keeping and other administration. Again, we have no, you know, administrative authority, but we do kind of some admin for this program. And we're also looking into some alternatives to the twine. Uh, so it's big bale twine that we primarily have right now. We're looking into maybe there's some, some better uh, alternatives to uh, the twine that products that we currently have that might make it more um, easy for producers to, you know, mark their forage as certified weed free. So those are some of the things that we do. So if you're looking to buy weed free forage, where can you find it? Well, I've already mentioned that you can pop onto our website, uh, which is abinvasives.ca. Uh, and we are committed to maintaining that list of inventory. You can also try farming the web. Those great folks have uh, um, added a certified weed free forage checkbox for us. So you can go on there right now and see if there's any certified weed free forage products available on farming the web. So there will be ways to confirm whether or not there, there is inventory available. So 2021, we were really excited going to our first growing season you know, we're revitalizing this program. We're the cheerleader. We're very excited. Well, we had, you know, as you all know, 2020 could not have picked a worse year. We had, you know, a devastating drought year and, you know, it, it, yeah. So we, we didn't have all of the results that we were hoping for, but we did have some wins. So one is, you know, we, we saw 45 weed-free forage inspectors trained up, which is amazing. We went from three to 45. That's great. We'll take that as a win. And in that first year, uh, we also went from three counties to 11 that were offering inspections. And again, we've grown that now to 16. So, uh, so we, we, we're definitely seeing some wins there. Uh, our, we did have three inspections for two different producers in 2021 and a total of just over 100 acres certified. So, you know, hopefully those numbers will grow. And we just, you know, our job is to put the foundation and put the pieces in place and, and everything else will come uh, as we go along. And, you know, we've all, we're all doing a rain dance right now uh, and, and very hopeful that we have more moisture this year because we absolutely don't want to see what happened again last year. It was absolutely terrible for, for many reasons. 
Um, so the other thing I want to mention before uh, before I finish up here is uh, we, we also think there might be a market for certified weed-free straw products. So straw is often used for erosion control, um, specific, specifically in projects you know, where they're trying to revegetate areas, so disturbed areas or reclamation areas and whatnot. Well, those are areas where you want to be a especially uh, careful about introducing, you know, noxious weeds into, right? Because if you have bare ground, uh, they will outcompete the desirable species that you're trying to uh, revegetate. Re so, so we know that this, um, th that there might be a market for this. And we also know that we, we could certify straw through the same process that we sort of currently certify weed free forage through. So we've been kind of just putting our feelers out there, you know, is there a demand for this product? Are you a straw producer? Or do you live in a county that offers this program? Uh, if you are, you know, let us know if you're interested in having your straw certified as weed free. You know, we just presented AISC, we were at the uh, Canadian Land Reclamation Association telling all of the reclamation professionals that we're trying to get this program off the ground. So if you're a straw producer, you know, there, there's, there's a market for this. Uh, that's definitely what we heard loud and clear from the folks that we talked to at that conference. And, uh, and we will help you sell your products. So let us know if you're interested in this. So finally, to sum up, Certified Weed Free Forage is not a new program. It's been around for 22 years. If it was a person, it would be able to vote and drink. You know, it's, it's an old program. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about weed free forage or straw, please pop onto our website, abinvasives.ca, or if you're looking for inventory, you can also try farming the web as well. Um, with that, I'm going to put my contact information up and invite anyone, if you are interested in, in talking about invasive species, weed free forage, you know, whatever it is, uh, fire us an email, give us a phone call. We're here to chat. We're here to help. We're a resource. We look at all Albertans as our clients. We need to work together to protect Alberta from the impacts of invasive species. Um, follow, follow us on social media. And uh, thank you so much for your time today.